Well, hello, this is part two of the amazing Epping Model Railway exhibition, which is held at the Thornley Brick Pit over the Queen's birthday long weekend. This is the 2015 show, and yes, that was Lady, who was on the Train Tasia layout, and that looks like a very interesting model that got a lot of people quite excited. Before we get into some You Drive It, Thomas and Friends crazies, we're going to take a look at a layout called Dungog. There was a donations area here because Dungog had suffered a really bad flood where some people died in 2015. <laughs> And I'll read about this display. It says it's a HO gauge layout representing the station of Dungog, which is about 80 kilometres north of Newcastle, that's Newcastle in Australia, not in England, on the main northern coast railway line to Brisbane. For much of the 20th century, Dungog has a small locomotive depot and it played an important role in running the trains on the north coast line. Prior to constructing any scenery on this layout, a site visit was made and every aspect of the town was recorded including taking photographs of the Dungog landscape. All the buildings have been carefully constructed in accordance with the appearance of the originals. Trees and other landscape features were also treated in a similar manner and this work was carried out by the members. The back scene around the whole layout is the actual scenery viewed from the railway line. That's quite clever, isn't it? At one end of the layout is the Martins Creek Quarry, while at the other end is the Butter Factory. <laughs> I'll let you in a little secret though, having some technical difficulties and there's a lot of video I had to cut out of this. This is an absolutely excellent exhibit. It had DCC sound, so the train sounded real. It had some really good detailing. And for me, I can relate to this because it's an Australian environment. Very, very nice display this one, and you can spend literally hours watching it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, the next layout is one of the most popular ones at the Epping Model Railway train show, and it's the Thomas U Drive. For a small fee, which goes to a charity designated by Epping Model Railways, you can drive a Thomas and Friends character at breakneck speeds around this rather fancy layout. I have witnessed this layout over many years of coming to this train show, and what I notice is some children will drive the trains around like normal and stop at the platformers, but 90% of them will just basically turn this into a giant Thomas and Friends train race. I don't want to start a Buckman versus Hornby argument here, but this does feature Hornby Thomas and Friends trains. There's one attribute those trains have over Buckman, and that is they've got some pretty high speeds. These trains run really fast. And this exhibit here is a pure example of what I spoke about in the first part of these videos. Children like this sort of activity, they like to run their trains in a fairly risky manner. And because of that, this layout ends up being one of the most entertaining at the train show. Well, who do you think won the great race? Considering the layout style there and Gordon's handicap, do you think Toby won or do you think Gordon won? Please leave a comment and tell me who won the race. Okay, the next layout, well, it's actually a trader's display. It's called Model O Kits. And let me read here, a newcomer on the scene, Model O Kits are focused on creating highly detailed kits for O-scale modelers. As well as a number of buildings and line-side structures being available, they have recently released the famous AD60 class Garrett from DJH of England. Please check out this monster on the rails or have a chat to Glenn about upcoming models. Now, this was a completely stunning display, but it was at a stupid high level and basically children couldn't see it. And I spoke all about that in part one of these videos. Quite simply, if you can't impress children today, well, you'll never have them as a customer in the future. The next layout, it's rather nice, it's called Ghost Town, and it's a very different layout to look at. It's also ON30 gauge. Now what that is, is very clever, it's just normal HO track that everyone would have, and it uses an O gauge locomotive running on normal HO track. And the very common trick here is, is to model narrow gauge railways using this method. So with ON30, you're using a very conventional track style, but you're getting the advantage of a larger O-scale train, and the modeling for that can be a little bit easier and more pleasing to the eye. Yeah, ON30 is gaining in popularity, and maybe another way of looking at this is, it's a great way to get into a larger scale without busting the bank balance. 
the next layout it's called Valley Heights and it's amazing. Valley Heights is an interpretation of a unique New South Wales Goods Railway Loco Depot in O scale. This DCC layout was designed and created by John Parker as an exercise in the construction of a lightweight modular exhibition layout. This layout runs kit and scratch built locomotives but its main purpose is to prove O-scale layouts do not have to be huge or need the resources of large construction teams. Yes, I've seen this exhibit a couple of times and it is a complete killer exhibit. It's beautiful, there's always a train there because it's a shunting style of layout. I don't mind the shunting style layouts for the fact that there's always something to watch. And I'll be honest here, my video camera doesn't give this layout justice. You need to see something like this for real to fully appreciate it. Ooh, I love getting ahead of got shots, even though some of the operators don't like that being seen. Notice the height of the display here. It's about tummy height. I think this is a good high level for model railway exhibits. Any higher than this, and it starts to get problematic. Another good thing was this display was well lit. I think that's very important as well. And what I've done up the end here is I have slowed down the video to half speed to make this very realistic railway hopefully look even more real. Oak Age is stunningly beautiful, nice size. Uh, I like this display because it is so different. It's a long skinny display and it's really easy to see. And a big thanks to Mr. John Parker for putting in such a grand effort in one of the best displays on show. The next layout, it's something I can relate to because it's based on a part of Sydney. It's called Ashburn, I dare say. It's somewhere between Ashfield and Auburn. It's a bit of a fictitious area, but it does replicate what Sydney used to look like oh, back in the 1960s. I'm saying 1960s because I can see a red double-decker Tullock carriage there, and I think they came into service in 1964. For a while there, they went to blue and white. And then when I was going to school, uh, there were red rattler trains mixed with these double-decker tullocks. And I think when I was going to school, they reverted back to red. I distinctly remember trying to steer clear of the double-decker carriages uh, because the windows never opened wide enough. You couldn't hang outside the trains. We always liked to get inside the red rattlers, which had the windows, which had the latches on the side. And they made a certain sound like when you opened up the windows. And then you could lean right out of the windows and enjoy the train ride. And I'm reminiscing about times when things were very, very different. In my lifetime, I'd never seen steam trains running on the Sydney network. They had gone by the time I was travelling on trains. I'm not that old. I can see on Ashburn, they've got some steam mixed in here. And some people may argue, well, no, Leo, this isn't a time period of the early 50s. But when I see those red double-decker tullocks, uh, I'm sort of pinpointing, uh, I'm going to say the late 1960s. Maybe you can argue about that. I don't care, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if you saw them, but there's a few little funny setups in this layout. I like this because I can relate to this, and it's got a certain style. Sure, this is very different to that O gauge we just looked at prior to this one, but that's what makes train shows interesting. Uh, we like to see different styles of layouts.
I'm not sure whether I captured it on video, but the signaling on this layout was exactly like the Sydney network and the way the lights work. And also the extra layer of complexity of the electrical wiring and the pedographs on the electric trains. Nice work indeed. Okay, the next one is something my daughter has enjoyed and also my son, and it's called the Kids Scenery Clinic. This is presented by Division 7 of the National Model Railway Association. Sounds like something out of Star Wars. The story behind this clinic is this. Four years ago, Jeff Knott gathered a group of NMRA members to help him do a scenery clinic for the kids who came along to the train show. Such was a success that four years later, the NMRA are continuing this fabulous enterprise. Whilst Jeff unfortunately passed away, his great work is continued by members of the NMRA who are on hand this weekend to help in every way they can, and they are very helpful. This scenery clinic is for kids, but I've also seen adults indulge in this. And basically, you build yourself a shed, create your own tree, sprinkle some dirt, and place a rock or two and walk away with your own precious memory of the show, all built by yourself. Just some history on the NMRA, if you don't know, and I didn't know. The NMRA was formed in Milwaukee in the United States in 1935 by just over 100 modelers who believe standards should be introduced. This has grown to over 25,000 members in 42 countries across the globe. The Australasian region encompassing Australia, New Zealand and some Pacific Islands. And if you have the smallest interest in model railways, the NMRA have an excellent website. It's www.nmra.org. Oh, I start to sound like an ad, wasn't I? Um, naughty me. Uh, but to relate things to Australia, because this is an exhibit in Australia, and I'm Australian, let me read this. The National Model Railroad Association Australasian Region has prepared a beginner's model railroading course, which is freely available on our website at www.nmra.org.au. Simply click on the educational button to access the educational pages which will explain the course and its content. And if I remember and find this link, I'll put it down in the more info area of this video. The other way to easily find the NMRA is to simply put NMRA into a Google search and hopefully it will be one of the top listed, if not the top listed thing in that Google search. That is unless the insurance company in Australia called NRMA has paid to basically smother everything else. Well I'm not sure if you noticed what was going on in the video while I was blabbing on about the NMRA. My son, with the amazing assistance of a gentleman called Les Fowler, has put together a nice little scenery piece. And I've actually sort of forgotten about the importance of PVA glue and how PVA glue is sort of magical in model work. This little piece of scenery may look all wet and yucky, but don't worry, it doesn't take very long. And once it's dried, everything is stuck on there nice and firm. The final layout we will take a look at in this video, and it's the grandest one at the show. Well worth the entry fee alone. It's called Smuggler's Cove. Now let me read from the book here. The Smuggler's Cove adventure started when Jeff Knott and Michael Flack and their wives visited the New England area of the USA after the 2011 narrow gauge convention. While in New England, they took photos of just about everything in Cape Cod, Booth Bay Harbour, Bar Harbour and Kennebunk Port. Hope I've said that correctly. Upon returning to Australia, they were so inspired they decided to build a layout based on their travels called Smuggler's Cove. The layout consists of three sections. During construction of the first two sections, Jeff was diagnosed with cancer and passed away. Michael continued the work and finished the third section, so the completed layout was dedicated to the memory of Jeff and his great modelling skills. The layout has been promised for eventual display in the new model railway museum being established in Sacramento, California. So in reading that, that's telling us what sort of standard we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a premium model railway exhibit. The trains and buildings on Smuggler's Cove are ON30 scale and gauge. 
and I spoke about Owen 30 back on the Ghost Town layout in this video. The buildings on the layout are scratch built in card and paper with strip wood reinforcing. The myriad of detail items were manufactured from general household items by Jeff and Michael. And that's one of the secrets to good modelling is seeing an everyday item and understanding how you can use that in a miniature environment. At this train show, Smuggler's Cove is being operated by members of the Hills Model Railway Society based at Borkham Hills. Smuggler's Cove, it's very different to the other railway displays because in a funny way, it's not about the trains. It's more about the scenery. The trains are there well, occasionally running through this incredibly detailed scenery and it's one of these displays that the, the more you look and the closer you look, more things get revealed and I'll be quite honest here this exhibit is totally awesome I think one of the greatest cheats on this exhibit is the way they've got the force perspective going on it's very clever in the way the miniature dissolves into the 2d painting in the background that style of illusion is something that eludes a lot of model railway modelers a few years ago when I started to see Jeff Knott's amazing work I wanted to know more about him and one simple thing you can do is type in his name as a Google search or in YouTube if you put G E O W F N O W T and maybe Model Railway after that you'll find there's information on forums related to railways and also videos on YouTube where he's explaining how to do Model Railway scenery. Model Railway train shows are fantastic places to take still cameras and video cameras and if you're in the right spot at the right time uh, you'll probably get some amazing shots. I know at the previous year's show, and that was 2014, I stupidly took a GoPro camera along with me thinking oh, I'll be smart and I'll get some video of the trains with a GoPro and I won't have to worry about focus or anything, you know, the GoPros just do everything. <laughs> but it ended up being one of the biggest mistakes I made and I learned a lesson that sometimes you've got to take the right sort of camera to video trains. And the sort of camera that I say is the right style of camera is one which is easy to use. I hate cameras that have got buttons and functions all over them. You've got to drill down through menus a thousand times to change something. I just like cameras that just have a couple of buttons and you can manually change the focus and you can control the white balance and you can control how much light is being let into the camera. But the one thing I think is really important is a camera with a good steady shot. I take everything basically handheld, as dangerous as that sounds. Well, I've drifted off track away from Smuggler's Cove. I should say that this layout is set at adult chest height. I was almost going to say adult nipple height, but there's a no nipple policy on YouTube. It is a very adult display. What I've found is children won't look at this that long because, well, there's not many trains moving about. But I did notice adults will stand and look at this for a long period of time. So we finally got to the end and this was the 2015 Epi Model Railway Brick Pit Exhibition held over the Queen's Birthday Long Weekend in Sydney, Australia. I have heard through a leak out the back of the club, actually I heard from two people, that the 2016 display is going to be the biggest show ever. I think the railway club got a big scare when they heard some of the negative feedback from this 2015 display which sadly saw very few exhibitors down on the floor but what that had me do was look at other things that I would normally not look at in particular watching those trains getting detailed in the detailing clinic that was actually very interesting to watch anybody who's putting up weekend displays these days need to understand that we're all connected by social media if there's something really decent so often people will just flash out to all their friends hey the train show looks amazing this year come and take a look if you put up something substandard those messages won't go out in fact you'll get negative messages going out so that's the warning about these days we do live in very different times in the way we all communicate with each other okay i hope you enjoyed this video i'm very sorry for splitting it over two videos thanks for watching and bye for now